Hello, this is Dr. Patrick Nimichek, and I would like to thank you for allowing me to speak to this very, very important conference, and hope I'm able to help some of you with the recovery of your children. First, I'd like to go over the basic fundamentals of what are required for a child's brain to develop normally. First is pruning. Pruning is a process where a child has 100 billion neurons and by the age of five, six, maybe seven, they have to prune that down like pruning the branches of a tree by 50%. This pruning allows for more efficient uh, neurological pathways to be developed and how your child hits all the developmental milestones. Now during normal life, we all have accidents and injuries and we have to repair the brain. These can be physical, emotional, inflammatory uh, traumas, but fortunately the brain is des designed to repair all of these within three months. Then you have somewhat of a software issue. This is the development of neural networks. Here the brain will be crowdsourcing more and more neurons for particular tasks. This is how somebody starts with the fundamentals of piano and over many, many years are able to finally play Chopin. But this is also how a child socializes and learns to mature. And finally, rejuvenation, maintenance, maintenance of a healthy brain. In the last 18 months, there have been some landmark studies demonstrating that it's looking like the human brain is replacing about 90% of all of its neurons with brand new ones every three weeks. This is a dramatic departure from our prior view that the brain was static and incapable of recovery. Now, unfortunately, inflammation gets in the way of all of these elements. Pruning. Pruning stops or is greatly lessened. This results in developmental and sensory and motor issues the repairing is also impaired. Uh, chronic damage results in the constipation, reflux, hyperactivity, anxiety that are common in children. Neural networks are difficult to be formed, so we have delays in maturity and socialization. And then finally, impairment of rejuvenation. This in particular is seen as the development of neurodegenerative disorders in adults. Now over the 15 years I've been working on adults, my whole focus we had discovered many years ago was that if we lowered inflammation, adults and their brains would recover. It is that, that background that we first applied it to children about seven years ago with a dramatic uh, clinical response in the kids. And what we understand is by reducing inflammation, the pruning reactivates. Children start hitting their milestones. The repairing returns, constipation goes away, hyperactivity will go away, anxiety will go away, the frequent hunger and thirst that you see, these are all symptoms of underlying injury. They will all be repaired. Neural networks will start growing. Neural networks will start growing. This increases the child's capability to learn complex things and then throughout their life they'll, they'll maintain a healthy brain. The primary sources of inflammation, now there's many many small sources, I'm sure there are some we don't even know of yet, but the main ones that we focus on are bacterial overgrowth, the omega-6 fatty acids, the deficiency of omega-3s, and the failure of the vagus nerve. The main one for recovery is we have to get bacterial overgrowth of the small intestine, otherwise known as SIBO, to fully recover. If this is not balanced and controlled, you have minimal to no recovery. The excessive fatty acids, omega-6 fatty acids, namely linoleic acid, this is present in most of the common commercial vegetable oils that are used in food because they are so cheap. This is also present in livestock that are fed corn and soybeans, for instance, because the oils in the grain get in the meat. This requires a reduction of these oils in the diet where you can, but importantly, supplementation of olive oil, which will help protect you 
from these uh, uh, from the linoleic acid. Deficient intake of omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, these should naturally be in our food supply, especially meats and the fish we eat. Uh, there's very little of that in the foods anymore because most of these are farm raised and this requires fish oil supplementation. And then we are finding in our work that vagus nerve function uh, is impaired. And we'll talk about the vagus nerve shortly. The importance of it is the vagus nerve is how the body naturally controls inflammation. Let's talk about a normal intestinal tract first. We have about 1500 species of bacteria in there, give or take some. Uh, we have been passing it from mother to child for 3 million years. The same bacteria. Um, the primary factors here are breastfeeding and vaginal delivery. We know there are predominantly these different families of bacteria here live in the small intestine, while these live in the large intestine. And that there's very few up here. For every one bacteria here, you have 100 million down here. So this basic organization of our intestinal tract has been consistent for 3 million years. This is being disrupted. What is happening is we have since 1900s sequential loss of bacteria from each maternal generation from things like antibiotics and pesticides, uh, medications, plastics, things of that sort. And uh, as the bacteria become depleted, they are more and more or less able to maintain that normal balance of birds and fish. And it takes a wide variety of things will disrupt this where now you have normal bacteria living in the wrong place. Antibiotics can trigger this, vaccines can trigger this, surgery can trigger this, probiotics, antacids, general anesthesia, they can all trigger this. And this is what results in leaky gut. Leaky gut, we've, this, this phenomena of overgrowth was discovered 60 years ago. There is a phenomenal volume of research done on this and I want to make this point very strongly. Their leaky gut is not caused by yeast, candida, or parasites, period. There is no scientific evidence to support that in spite of it very commonly being discussed. The inflammation coming out of the small intestine can be substantial. Here is the small intestine. These finger-like projections are where you absorb your nutrients. You have a very thin barrier here because of your food and those very few bacteria here, you don't want them leaking into the body because right in this little space, just one cell away from the inside is 80% of all of your inflammatory white blood cells and your mast cells. So now envision, instead of just a few bacteria here, you have 10,000 or 100,000 times the bacteria. Just the biological load allows bacteria to leak through the seam. And when it does so, it will trigger both mast cells and white blood cells in a huge reaction. This in adults will often cause pain, achiness through the muscles and the joints, but these cytokines that are released will flow into the bloodstream and up into the brain and will inhibit all repair and developmental processes in the brain. If you do not get control over this, it is very hard to get any recovery in your child. Balancing the omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids. We naturally need omega-6 and omega-3s. Omega-6s come from plants, Omega-3s predominantly come from fish, and we have a normal ratio of these. The 6s are the natural molecule that help turn on normal, healthy inflammation to help you fight an infection or repair tissue. Omega-3s are the molecule that shut off your natural inflammatory reaction. Unfortunately, in the modern diet, because of all the oils and things I've discussed, 
people are getting upwards to 20 times the amount of omega-6s they should. So in order to help normalize this inflammatory control, we need to add olive oil, which block omega-6s, and try to decrease as much of these in the food supply as possible. In addition to the other side of the equation, we add fish oil. And finally, the use of electrical stimulation to activate the vagus nerve. This science behind this has been building for 20 years. This has been used very safely in patients with epilepsy, and there's upwards to 150,000 Americans with vagus nerve stimulators implanted in their chests. Fortunately, the nerve comes out to the ear, here in the bowl or across the concha, and a mild current will stimulate the nerve in a fashion that's similar to the device being placed in your chest. It is painless. Only five minutes a day will lower inflammation throughout the body for about 24 hours, and it has an excellent safety record. So putting it all together in the Nimichek protocol, it's basically we are going to balance the intestinal bacteria using either inulin, a prebiotic fiber, or a eubiotic medication known as rifaximin. There's going to be daily supplementation with fish oil. We're going to cut out the omega-6 oils that, where we can. The stuff that remains in the food supply, fortunately, we can block with olive oil. I recommend buying it from your smaller growers because there's less fraud when you do. And you're able to get a vagus nerve stimulator if you so desire. Uh, they are now available online through nimichectech.com. We're going to go over these one at a time. First, the oils, balancing the omega-6s. There is a small dose of fish oil and olive oil for the kids every day. We're going to try to avoid oils. Now, canola, avocado, coconut are all safe. Okay, Canola is a great cooking oil if you want to uh, have a safe daily cooking oil. You don't need to go up on the dose precisely every year. You can go up every two or three years. Um, use the preferred brands we discuss in the book, and the doses are also listed in the book, and you can find uh, print or ebook copies at nimacheckprotocol.com. I want to mention the book is in multiple languages, including Spanish, uh, all available on that website. Now, balancing the intestinal bacteria. As I mentioned, we have a prebiotic fiber called inulin or rifaximin. Do not use any other types of fiber. Do not use probiotics to do this. Okay, Doing so will only cause confusion and might even hurt the child. If under eight years of age, I recommend starting with inulin. This is a natural fiber. It's in onions and garlic. It's in artichokes. It's in agave. All right, it's very safe. If between eight and 14, you can start with either. But as the children get older, the inulin either won't work or will fail after six to 12 months, in which case, as the kids are older, I recommend we start with rifaximin. And again, like the oils, the brands and doses for these things are listed in the book. Now, as I mentioned, the inulin and even the rifaximin might fail. And uh, if we have to be able to figure this out. Now, what happens is there's a thing called a plateau, where as you're seeing neurological recovery over time, and suddenly everything comes to a stop. And I mean everything, not just one thing. It's almost the entire process comes to a stop. Now, in the first few weeks, don't jump to the conclusion it's annulin or rifaximin failure because some things such as a low-grade sinus infection, dental problems, a recent head trauma or some emotional trauma, those can cause a slight change in behavior that looks like a plateau. But if you fix the infections or so forth or give them a little time, they recover spontaneously and progress will be renewed within a few weeks. If you have lack of progress and now you're one, two, three months out. This is definitely when you have failure of inulin or rifaximin. This is going to require a change in therapy. And I want to emphasize, there's no need to change the fish oil olive oil. These do not cause the plateau if you are anywhere close to the doses I recommend and using the brands I recommend. Here's my hierarchy of treatment for the gut. 
First, we start with daily inulin. That can, in a large number of the younger children, that's all you need for recovery. Some of the younger children, and it becomes more frequent as you get older, it will fail and you'll hit a plateau. So we have to go to intermittent rifaximin. That's a dose every now and then. This is very hard to manage because the children, by nature of their neurological problems, can't give you any feedback. So you can't tell when they're relapsing in terms of symptom-wise. So what we have found has been a major, major refinement and successful one is the use of a twice a day, 10 time a day course of rifaximin repeated every month. All right, we just force the bacteria to stay balanced. This is an extremely safe medication and we are having very profound recovery rates with this. The time course for this if you're an adult, you want to kind of get off of your medicine after a while. But with adults, we're dealing with migraines or some heartburn and things like that. This is an opportunity in our children to get them to approach a neurotypical state. Many parents, and I agree, are maintaining the monthly rifaximin for an indefinite period of time until the children can fully, fully recover. Now, even in this, there is about a 10% chance that the rifaximin won't work. You won't see, if you change the monthly rifaximin, you ought to see improvements by month two or three. If not, you're relapsing very quickly. And we have to go to continuous. Sometimes the parents will notice improvements, but before each cycle, before they start the next month cycle, they can tell the child is relapsing already by their behavior. We have to go to continuous. What continuous means is twice a day, every day, 365 days a year. Now, how long would we do this for? Well, in many of the children, we now go out to a year of continuous and we're able to back off. And at that point, we keep them on a maintenance of monthly rifaximin. But there's gonna be some variation in that and we just base it upon case by case basis. And finally, adding the vagus nerve stimulator. VNS, as it's called, lowers inflammation and will provide your child with a fuller and faster recovery. Once you start the vagus stimulation, again, it's only five minutes a day, improvement happens rather quickly. Within four to eight weeks, uh, changes, positive changes are occurring. If your child's 20, 25, it might take 12 weeks to notice improvement. It is painless, very safe, and portable. And again, more information is available at nimichectech.com. So in summation, we don't fix the child's brain. The child's brain is programmed to heal itself. We have very, very powerful natural repair mechanisms most of which were unknown 10, 15 years ago. We know that reducing inflammation allows those repair mechanisms to activate so that the brain can heal itself. This is not just restricted to developmental issues. All aspects, neurological aspects, are capable of recovery. We have children with sensory issues, motor function, children with visual and auditory problems, all becoming or gaining substantial improvements. Many children have been given a, a genetic diagnosis, either a vague, there's a deletion or something, or some well-known older uh, disorders such as microcephaly. Shockingly, we're finding that these genetic disorders are not preventing the children from recovering neurologically. Now, I will say if a child is born with a genetic disorder and they have a certain change in their, their facial or skull shape or their limbs, those will not improve. But the neurological part of their brains seem to improve. So do not let any genetic diagnoses prevent you from trying this very safe and very inexpensive program. And many of the kids are actually small for their size or their age, I should say. There is a substantial catching up in height 
and, and muscle mass. It is not unusual for, say, kids from, you know, 7 to uh, 12 to grow 3 to 5 inches in only 6 months once they start this protocol. We start seeing this renewed growth. So, again, we do not fix the brain with the Nemechek protocol. We lower inflammation and we unleash the most powerful aspects known to medicine. It's the body's own healing power and it's, this is how the children's recover. And I would just like to thank you all. Uh, we have many followers in Latin America, many supporters, and I hope this adds to your body of knowledge. For you who have heard about this for the first time, Gene and I just want to wish you all the best with your children and whatever path you may take. And we hope that we can, uh, this little talk today has provided you with some additional insight. Thank you very much.